Welcome back to the UFC Prospect Show. I am James Lynch. He is James Krause. And replacing Nick Kalikas this week is the managing editor of MMA Odds Breaker, Brian Hemminger, my old co-worker here on the... I guess we're still co-workers. Brian, how are you? Oh, I'm doing good. Uh, confidence is high after going 13-1 and one on my staff picks in back-to-back -back UFC events. So... There we go. There we go. We had to bring the heat this week. Uh, really excited to have Brian on here. Of course, Nick uh, should be back next week. We'll, we'll see when that happens. But in the meantime, you can watch him on UFC on the line. Always doing a great job on that show. Um, we got to mention our promo uh, bet DSI um, bet DSI EU. Make sure you check that out. Use the promo code UFC and get a match deposit bonus. Uh, that's a big perk of checking out this show, the match deposit bonus. So make sure you go check out bet DSI. That's the odds we're going to be using here today on the program. Uh, before we get into UFC Vegas 42, we got to do a recap last week uh, we did okay i mean uh, me personally uh the edgar vera fight did not go the distance we were close though right that third round knockout by chito vera unfortunately not happening i did take rose nama Yunus last week as my bet of the week she cashed obviously you know split decision got it done and kraus your bet of chris barnett over one and a half i figured that was gonna hit it just out of nowhere he lands that spinning kick and then bobby green uh, hits as well so that was a good play there as well just bobby did it so quickly he ended up doing it in the first round so that's a recap of last week gotta bring that up because i saw a couple comments being like you guys are hiding bets we're not we just didn't write it down the week before so here we are mentioning what happened last week and again we're going 50 50 so it's all good let's get into the main event of saturday's fight huge odds on this one uh, it is max holloway and yair rodriguez the former featherweight champion max holloway coming in at minus 714 on bet dsi the comeback on yair rodriguez plus 500 before we get into these guys' picks we're going to hear from alexander volkanovsky anthony smith and kenny florian on who they're picking in saturday night's main event uh max holloway I think Max Holloway will be uh, too much, too much pressure. And, you know, again, Ye likes to fight on the outside. And, again, he's the type of guy, you give him room to move, you stand in front of him and let him work at a, at a range he's comfortable at. Mate, he looks like a, he looks like a, a absolute weapon. But you take that away from him, you know, and then obviously he has to try and think of the fly a little bit. And, you know, that's not really as well. So the, the pressure uh, that Max will bring will, will definitely uh, make it hard for, for Ye. Uh, I think Max. I think Max. I think he's... I don't know, it seems like he's angry and he's fighting really, he fights really well when he's angry. Uh, he's, I think he's got something to prove and I think he really wants that title back. Um, even after holding it for so long and being so dominant, he still seems motivated. Um, and Yair yeah, is very, very good, but he's he's got a lot of flashy stuff that, that isn't seem, doesn't seem to be built up by a bunch of foundational stuff, you know what I mean? Like, Max can be flashy too, but if you really got to like back it off and just break everything down to your fundamentals and your basics, um, he's really, really solid there. So I, I think that Max just keeps it basic, keeps it simple, um, deals with Yair's, you know, crazy spinning kind of unpredictable style and, and gets a W. I like Holloway in that one. I think Rodriguez is very dangerous. Again, Holloway is just so damn consistent. You know what Max Holloway is going to show up for the most part every single time out. I've been so impressed with his intelligence, his ability to execute, his, his aggression, his precision. I like Holloway. And there you have it, guys. It is all three fighters picking Max Holloway. Pretty obvious here with the odds. Uh, we'll start first with you, Brian. Who are you picking in this fight and why? Uh, it's pretty obvious. I mean, you got to go Max Holloway. The thing that he does about as good as any fighter in the UFC is that forward pressure. I mean, he forces fighters to fight defensively consistently. Uh, you are on your back foot against him. And honestly, Yair Rodriguez isn't that comfortable when he's put in that position. I mean, I know he won the Korean zombie fight with that last second elbow, but he was on pace. Like he was one second away from losing that fight. And the zombie was doing the exact same thing that Holloway's going to do, except Holloway's going to do it even better. And Holloway has better durability. Like nobody's ever knocked him out or even dropped him. I mean, he may have been rocked a couple times against Poirier, but for the most part, that guy is about as iron chin as you get in the featherweight division. So there's just are extremely limited options for uh, Yaya Rodriguez to pull this off. Krause, you going the same way here. Yeah, you have to. I mean, uh, you're, talking, you're talking about a guy, you take the, the two fights with Alex Volkanovsky away. I mean, we're talking about a guy that has dominated that division, the who's who of that division, I might add. And you can argue on both of those fights that he beat Alex Volkanovsky. But when I look at this fight, I get, you know, fighter A versus fighter B, I see a guy that pressures, has an incredible chin, uh, has incredible takedown defense. The, the, I, don't, I don't know if you guys seen this or not, but there was like a, uh, there was like a little, uh, it was like a graph showing 
uh, significant strikes landed per fight that the UFC or somebody put out. And it was like, everybody was like here. And then Max Holloway was like in his own little yeah, I did see circle, that. like yeah. not even close to anybody else. So we're talking about a guy that when, when you watch Max fight, he's going to hit you, right? Like he's going to hit you. He's going to find you. And when I, when I look at you here, he's a guy that historically he's a little hittable. Uh, is he super dangerous? Yeah. But you're, you're dangerous against a guy that has a granite chin too. So Man, it's just really hard for me to bet against Max Holloway uh, in this fight. And I'm going to complete the hat trick here. Uh, I don't know how you can pick Yair Rodriguez in this fight. He hasn't fought since October of 2019. He had that USADA issue that kept him out. He's had some injuries. And just the level of opposition is just really glaring in this fight, right? He had the two fights against Jeremy Stevens. Last time I checked, Jeremy Stevens not in the featherweight division anymore. In fact, he lost his last fight at lightweight as well. The Korean zombie fight you guys referenced, that's a fight that, again, he was on his way to losing, got a last, last second knockout on that one. What's his best win? Like, really, if you look on his resume, nothing even comes close to some of the wins that Max Holloway's had. And you talked about that Volkanovski fight, that second one. A lot of people felt like Max did enough to get the nod in that fight. I just don't, I mean, other than Yair, the fact that he's young and maybe he's going to pull an Ortega on us and look really good after all this time off. But we're talking about Max Holloway here. We're not talking about a guy in the Korean zombie in that fight that was coming off an injury. Holloway's fresh. He just fought this year. He absolutely battered Calvin Cater in a fight that realistically could have been stopped a lot sooner. It's just that Calvin's so tough that he wasn't able to put him away. But um, yeah, I'm going Max Holloway here. We'll talk a little bit later in the show of how you can get a bit creative with this fight. But minus 714, really steep, but it is warranted in this case. I'm also picking Max Holloway in the fight. Uh, Co-main event, uh, we've got Ben Rothwell taking on Marcos Rogerio de Lima here. Ben Rothwell, the favorite at minus 154. Lima is, de Lima, I should say, is plus 133. Brian, which way are you leaning in this fight? Uh, i got to go experience here with Ben Rothwell. I mean, the guy's been around forever. He's tough as nails, has a lot of power. And while he doesn't quite have that same pressure style that Holloway has, he still is a guy that doesn't back up. And DeLima, you know, historically was a light heavyweight. He's more than just moving up to heavyweight, uh, you know, because it's easier, uh, doesn't have to cut as much weight. And while DeLima might have, you know, a little bit more of a jujitsu background, I mean, how are you going to get Ben Rothwell down? So gets into a slugfest with Ben Rothwell. I got to side with Ben Rothwell, especially since I think DeLima is a lot easier to knock out. Kraus, which way are you going in this one? Yeah, I like I like Ben Rothwell a lot actually in this fight. It's one of my or in this yeah in this fight. Uh, it's one of my it's one of my better picks this week, and I'll be I will be one hundred percent honest with you guys. This week may be the worst betting week that I can ever remember. I, I, there yeah. is this nothing that I love. It's full of like inconsistencies, weird matchups, dangerous fighters, all the stuff that I try to avoid. This card is just stacked full of them. Uh, however. When I do look to, to place a bet, I look for consistency. I look for durability. I look for well-roundedness. And, and, and I get those things with, with Ben Rothwell. He's, he's been pretty consistent his, his entire career. I will say this. I didn't think he looked that good against Barnett his last fight out. It looked like he had a little trouble on the feet. But I can see Barnett. He's just a weird guy. He's tough to, he's tough to find out there. Uh, just does a lot of weird things at heavyweight. Very agile for the weight class. Uh, but but if you, if you look at method to victory for DeLima, it's, it's probably like knockout. I don't, I don't see him taking him down in Southern Rothwell. And I definitely don't see him knocking Rothwell out. Uh, he's too durable. So I just, when I look at method of victory, I just don't see very many ways for DeLima to win this fight. I see a couple different ways for Rothwell to win this fight. So for that, I'm going to, I'm going to go with Rothwell. Yeah, you bring up a great point there about Rothwell in terms of him getting finished. In fact, the last time he was finished was back in 2013. It was a submission loss to Gabriel Gonzaga. That's how long it's been since Ben Rothwell has been finished in a fight. So this is a key thing here because this is only a three-round fight. You know, Dalim is not a guy that's going to go out there and necessarily put you away, away in the first round. The only thing I'll say about this fight is that Rothwell, well, he does have the experience. He is 40 years old. I know Dalim is not that much younger, but you do worry a little bit about that. And you look at some yeah. of those wins that Rothwell's had recently. You mentioned the Barnett fight. OSP is a light heavyweight. Stefan Struve's retired. The fights that he's lost, though, against Tybura, Arlovsky, and Ivanov are guys that realistically he should probably beat. So I don't really know what type of Rothwell we're getting. I would, I'm going to pick him just based off experience and, and just based off the fact, that, like I said, he's tough to finish. But this is one I'm kind of staying away from from a betting perspective just because of the fact that I think that Rothwell really inconsistent especially later in his career you mentioned or I mentioned there you know some of the losses he's had so I'll pick him but not a super confident pick as well uh, but saying that I don't think the Lima is going to knock him out either so there we go um, let's get to our uh, prop bet of the week we're already here uh, Brian were you able to get a prop bet for us uh, for the show this week and if so what do you like all right I was able to get one 
Um, I was actually a little surprised that the the odds weren't worse. So mm -hmm. there are two fighters on this card that are guaranteed violence every time that they're in the octagon and they're facing each other. So when I see stuff like that, I immediately check to see what are the odds that this fight will not go the distance. So it is Chaos Williams against uh, Miguel Beza. Uh, nice. These guys are just going to be throwing heat for 15 straight minutes. Williams is pretty chinny. So if Beza clocks him, uh, he's going down. And while Beza historically hasn't been a guy that you know is easy to finish, I think Williams has the power to finish him too if he lands that big shot. So uh, I'm going to say my prop for uh, this entire card is uh, that that Beza versus Williams fight does not uh, or does not go the distance. So I think it was a minus 175, and I know that you're laying a little chalk there, but that might be a steal. Yeah, I, I like that a lot. Uh, Kraus, what about you? What do you like in this week as far as prop bets? Listen, I asked this two minutes before we started the show. I didn't <laughs> know the lines on this, and I'll be honest with you, I can't believe the lines, and like – I'm about to give you guys my best play, but like if I look at this a little bit more, this may be my best play of the week. I like this, and that's Max Holloway by TKO at plus 130. How? I don't, I don't. That's insane to me. I don't, I don't understand how this is like. He's gonna decision. I got like no way, man. Like Yair has been, he's been beat up before. Like remember what Frankie did to him? KZ was, KZ was busting him up, bro. Holloway is going to double KZ's volume, like literally double his volume. Do you think he can withstand that for five rounds? Not happening. Like at Max Max Holloway by TKO at plus 130 is absolutely insane to me. I'm all over it. That's, that's my, that may even be my pick for the week. I'm going to give you guys another one just because I'm feeling generous today. But that's my prop of the week for sure. Yeah, great. I, I talked about that as well on my podcast this week. I think Max does finish it within the five rounds. So with you there, uh, Kraus. But I'll tell you one I'm going with as well. Song Yudong, Julio Arce in the bantamweight division. Song Yudong right now wins by decision is plus 130. I mean, I, I get that it's a close fight. Uh, but if you look at the last four fights of Song Yudong, they've gone the distance, right? He hasn't had a finish in, in a little while. Julio Arce has never been finished in the UFC. In fact, the last stoppage loss he had was actually on the regional scene for Ring of Combat against Brian Kelleher. That's how long it's been. That was back in 2016. So I like the chances there i do favor song Yidong in that fight i know it's 50 50 but i think song Yidong at plus 130 wins by decision i think that's an absolute steal there so that is going to be uh, my prop bet of the week and uh, we're gonna uh you know sort of you know see how that one plays out because i know last week we were close on the uh, the decision prop there with edgar and um and chito vera but uh, we'll see we'll see what happens in this one let's get to our bet of the week guys as we're uh, closing out the show here uh brian what is your most confident play what is your bet of the week on ufc vegas 42 now it's not my most confident play, but it's a straight bet. It's an underdog that I think has a realistic chance. So if you're going to place a bet where, you know, you can at least get a full return on your money back uh, and not lay like a, you know, have to put two to one or whatever to, to get anything. Um, the one underdog that I think I might like more than anybody else is uh, Kennedy and Chekwu against uh, Da Eun Jung. I mean, you've got... Uh, Jung, you know, split decision against Sam Alvey, which, you know, I know Alvey's a, a, a solid veteran, but you should not be getting a split decision if you are supposed to be, you know, a guy that's potentially ranked in the top 15 in the light heavyweight division. And then Chekwu is a killer. I mean, this guy is violent, ferocious knockouts when he competes. And I know that this is a pretty big test for him, uh, but I think that he can rise to the occasion here and I think he's got a really good chance to get the win, and he's the underdog. I mean, it's not a huge dog. It's like plus 100 right now, but still, you're getting a full return on your money back, and, and I think that he should be favored. Interesting pick. Uh, Kraus, what about you? What's your bet of the week? I can't stress this enough how much I hate this week, uh, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to give it to you. Uh, <laughs> it's so bad. It's just, Man, if you, like, if you look at the things that – we stay away from typically it's this chalk full of them chalk full of them so i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna give you my my my, my chalk play of the week here and uh, i'm just gonna go courtney casey uh i like uh, courtney casey over uh, liana jojua i just feel like casey's gonna stuff the takedowns she's for sure the better striker she's very durable uh 
the only the method of victory the only way i see jojo winning this fight is maybe by a submission from her back but casey has has been stayed pretty disciplined in the past on on striking with people i think there's a clear cut striking advantage in this it's i mean it's it's right there the blueprint is laid on how to beat uh jojo uh i see casey uh out outboxing her for 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 uh, 15 minutes I, I really i like this play a lot i actually just doubled down on it right before the show started i, I just don't see how jojo is going to be able to hang with her on the feet i also like courtney casey a couple interesting tidbits about casey that i'll mention here first and foremost is that she's back at the mma lab i don't know if a lot of you know that she was sort of training on her own going to a couple different gyms yeah so she's back at the lab her and her boyfriend jacar close they made amends with the gym if you remember a lot of fighters left the mma lab a few years back they went to fight ready uh yeah. they left fight ready gone back to the mma lab so just talking to courtney and just hearing how great it is to get to have a lot of variety of training partners I know mario batiste has been one of her main training partners this camp so just to have that variety i think is a huge plus for her the second thing with courtney casey this is the second last fight under contract. James, you know this more than anyone, right? When you have one fight left, you get to renegotiate. Casey really needs this win. There's a lot of urgency here because if she gets the win, she's got a lot of leveraging power at the UFC when she wants to resign. So that's another sort of plus as well. And I just think it's a bad matchup for Jojua as well. So um, I, I like Casey as well, but I'm going to get a little bit more value on this. And this, and again, I know the line is high on this other fighter, but Felicia Spencer, this is the featherweight division. If it was any other division, the, the people would be talking more about this being a bit of a mismatch. But Felicia Spencer has fought Chris Cyborg. Borg, Amanda Nunez. She beat Megan Anderson in the very first round. Like she's someone that is very, very talented. And even her last loss against Norma Dumont, that was a split decision loss. She's taking on Leah Letson, who's been off for a very long time. She's had some health issues. Yes, Letson is a younger fighter, and she's also someone that uh, you know, again, looked pretty good on the Ultimate Fighter. But I'm pretty sure Spencer's going to win that fight. So you put her in the parlay with Courtney Casey. Then I'm going to get even a little bit more greedy here. I like Tiago Moises against Joel Alvarez. Tiago Moises coming off that fourth round loss to Islam Mahashev. You saw what Islam did to Dan Hooker in the last fight, right? He finished him quickly. The fact that Tiago was able to go that long, I think shows how good he is. So much so the UFC actually gave him a new contract as well. So they're high on, high on him as well. He's like a two to one favorite right now. I just think he'll bounce back in a big way. I think he's a guy that we got to keep an eye on in that lightweight division. He's still very young. I think he's 26, so still making those building blocks here. And Joel Alvarez has looked great, but I just think Tiago Moises has the more upside here. So if you put them all together, you're getting some serious plus money on that. So uh, that's going to be my, my bet of the week is Courtney Casey, Felicia Spencer, and Tiago Moises in a parlay. Kraus mentioned it's a tough card to bet on, so sometimes you got to get a little bit creative with the parlay. So that's sort of how I'm going to end things with this card. Uh, Brian, thanks so much for doing this. It is uh, great to talk to you. Before we get out of here, uh, just let people know where they can find your work and anything you got coming up. We'll, we'll uh, give you the floor here. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, I guess Twitter at Brian Hemminger. I usually try to live tweet uh, uh, during events, but uh, you know, I'm actually a member of the UFC rankings panel. Uh, James, actually, I think I have you in uh, the top 15 in the welterweight division. If you really? are a Robin no, Chick individual. Cool. <laughs> I appreciate <laughs> um, that, man. I appreciate and that. I was recently named the editor of uh, our local newspaper uh, in Ohio, uh, Upper Sandusky. So you can check all my stuff about Wyandotte County if the, if it really you know floats your boat. Uh, you know, checking out dailychiefunion.com as well. And Kraus, you're traveling again this weekend, right? You're going to uh, Colorado for the Fury fights. Every damn weekend, man. I'm I'm so <laughs> sick of it. Yeah, yes, I am. You must be getting some serious uh, frequent flyer miles on that, right? Yes, yes. I'm. Uh, which sucks because out of Kansas City, there's only uh, Southwest is the only one that goes direct from Kansas City to Vegas. So, uh, I okay. after, so I'm like I'm like a list preferred, but like it sucks because <laughs> I just I just get on the plane before everybody else. But uh, I wanted to say real quick, uh, I just uh, I just started a. Uh, uh, TikTok that just is just for MMA betting. It's the oh, only cool. thing that is go is going on it is uh, just that. So I gave a couple picks uh, last week on. I gave three picks. I went two and one, and I was seven seconds away from that over one and a half on Volante and Barnett. That's the only one that I missed. So uh, I would still play that again. I feel like that. Uh, I feel like that's a good play. And the fact that I got it, I pick them, and it went up to minus two sixty. That tells me it's, it's still a good pick, even though it lost. There you go. That's great. I just got on TikTok recently as well. I'm trying to, you know, be a little bit more hip, I guess, yeah. uh, with kids these days. So, and, and old, no, it's, a, like, it, it's, it's a good platform, though. It's a good platform. It I'm is. the same way. I put all that it stuff is. on. And just a reminder to everyone out there, Kraus does have his bet of the week as a social clip out there. So if you happen to see that on Instagram, give it a like, you know, get get it out there because we obviously want to, you know, promote the show as best we can. And before we get out of here, got to mention our promo yet again with BetDSI. If you use the uh, promo code UFC, you get a match deposit bonus. Take advantage of this. We know you're betting the fights anyways. Use BetDSI. They're a great book. They help 
help support the show and we're really happy to be working with them as well. Uh, before we get out here, I know I already said that, but we're going to be listening to Kevin Lee, Patty Pimblett, and Rob Fawn on their picks for the main event as we sign off here. I'm James Lynch. He is James Krause. And thanks again to Brian Hemminger. We'll see you next week. And thanks so much for watching. Like all the way on that one. All the way. All the way. Yeah. Even though I like Yair. I like Yair. Yair's my boy, but uh, Ma Max is even more my boy. So, yeah. That, that, that one's, that's one of those ones you, you don't want either one of them to lose, and you don't like watching it. But, uh, yeah, I, I just see Max winning. Oh, um, Holloway all day. Easy. Holloway is the best 145 in the world. I don't care if he hasn't got the belt or not. He is the best 145 on the planet.